see we are in automatic payment program so in the automatic payment program yesterday we have completed two steps then step number three set up all company codes for payment transactions what is the meaning of all company codes we have only one company code right so why we have to set up this payment method for all company codes there, sometimes there is one business scenario sometimes it happens like this suppose you have two company codes in your group a company code and b company code in that case a company code can make the payments to vendors of b company code because sometimes b company code may face the funds problem similarly sometimes b company code can make the payment to vendors of a company code because sometimes a company code may face the funds problem so that business scenario may have to be configured right so in that case in order to have this type of functionality we have to set up this payment method for all company codes so first let us do the step while doing the step again i will explain path is same as above set up all company codes for payment transactions SPRO financial accounting accounts receivable and accounts payable business transactions outgoing payments automatic outgoing payments payment method bank selection for payment program set up all company codes for payment transactions click on new entries company code is equal to double three double six sending company code double three double six paying company code double three double six so what is the significance of sending company code and paying company code what is sending company code and what is paying company code i will explain you after this step then select separate payment per business area so if the vendor has supplied the goods for different business areas and different invoices then the system will make the payment business area wise then select maximum cash discount select maximum cash discount click on save so what is the meaning of sending company code and paying company code for example we have the company code 1 so company code 1 is making the payment to vendors of company code 2 see we have two company codes company code 1 and company code 2 so company code 1 is making the payment to vendors of company code 2 in that case company code 1 is called sending company code and company code 2 is called paying company code means in the sending company code field we enter company code 1 in the paying company code field we enter company code 2 then what happens is here yesterday i told you that when the system prints the checks the open items of the vendors are cleared in this case when the company code 1 has made the payment to vendors of company code 2 in which company code vendor line items are to be cleared in the company code 2 only means the system will clear the open items of the vendors of the paying company code suppose company code 1 sorry company code 2 is making the payments to vendors of company code 1 then again you have to click on next entry button right company code company code 2 you have to enter here sending company code company code 2 paying company code company code one that's how we have to set up these payment methods for all the interlinked company codes clear now in this case the intercompany transactions are created the intercompany transactions are posted see in the above case intercompany transactions are generated 
as follows. So in the sending company code books, paying company code account attached to bank because the bank balance of the sending company code is reduced and the sending company code has to receive the payment from <coughs> paying company code later on. I hope everybody is following. Similarly, in the paying company code, the entry posted is vendor account data to sending company code because the open items of the vendors or the account balance of the vendors of the paying company code are to be reduced and the paying company code later on has to make the payment to company code one that is com sending company code. So sending company code is created here. Clear? This is called setting up the payment method for all company codes for payment transactions. Even though you have only one company code, you have to set up this uh, step. Then after that, here we have selected maximum cash discount. Maximum cash discount. Right? Put heading in the notes. maximum cash discount by selecting this indicator by selecting this indicator the system will consider the system will consider the maximum cash discount terms the system will consider the maximum cash discount terms in the payment terms to determine the due date. To determine the due date. to determine the due date means what suppose for example one vendor is there he has given this payment terms See, if paid in 20 days, 3% cash discount. Otherwise, if paid in 30 days, 2% cash discount. Otherwise, if paid in 45 days, 0% cash discount. 0% cash discount. Okay, these are called payment terms. This is called first term. This is called second term. This is called third term. Suppose, for example, today we are executing the payment program and today is the 20th day. Then the system will print the check for this invoice after reducing 3% cash discount. It will not skip this invoice thinking that there is another 10 days, there is another 25 days like that. It will not think like that. It will consider the maximum cash discount terms in the payment terms to determine the due date. So if today is the 20th day, the system will take this invoice into consideration and it will print the check for that invoice after reducing 3% cash discount. So this is, this is the impact of selecting the checkbox. This is called maximum cash discount terms. Please write down this.
anybody is feeling any noise continuously yeah because chandrasekhar only is feeling the disturbance okay now i hope it's over for everybody yeah chandrasekhar please now see the next step set up paying company codes no actually there is no any noise from my side i am in the closed room step number 4 set up paying company codes for payment transactions so in this particular step also we perform some activities what are those settings or activities while doing the step i will explain path is same as above set up paying company codes for payment transactions click on new entries paying company code 3366 minimum amount for incoming payment 100 minimum amount for outgoing payment 100 click on forms button form for the payment advice so in this particular step you define the form for the payment advice i told you know the system automatically prints the payment advice for every vendor for whom the payment was done so in which form the payment advice is to be printed this form was already defined in the system F one one zero underscore D underscore Avis. Then click on Sender Details. Text ID is equal to ST standard text. Letter header F underscore triple zero one underscore header. Footer is equal to F underscore triple zero one underscore footer. signature text leave it blank sender f_301_ sender what does it mean see here form for the payment advice we defined that in this form the payment advice is to be printed but what is the content the standard content what is the content that is there in this form will be printed then every letter contains three parts no header part body part footer part so in the body part this text is printed then in the footer part whatever the content that is there in the in this form is printed then in the header part of the letter the content which is there in this form is printed so these are the settings we do in this particular step click on save see the next step creation of gl account bank account already we have created this account in the house banks so we need not do the step number 5 similarly creation of house bank and assign gl account number in the house bank this step also we have done already in the house banks then creation of check lots so this step also we have done already so step number 5 6 7 we need not do but why i have given here is just to remind you one point sometimes in the interview they will ask you what are the configuration steps of the automatic payment prakriya in that case you have to tell them the step number 5 6 and 7 also then only your answer is 100% complete otherwise it's only 90% complete okay so we need not do this 5 6 7 then see the step number 8 set up bank determination for payment transactions what is this very important go back to notes please bank determination for payment transactions bank determination 
for payment transactions. First to take the notes, I will explain. In this activity, in this activity, we set up the ranking order. We set up the ranking order for each combination of house bank for each combination of house bank and the payment method. <coughs> for each combination of house bank and payment method. For every payment method, for every payment method, in every house bank, for every payment method, in every house bank, we can set up we can define we can define the following parameters number 1 the account id the account ID from which the checks are to be printed, the account ID from which the checks are to be printed, number two, The bank GL account to be updated. The bank GL account to be updated. For that account ID. Number three. The amount of funds to be used, the amount of funds to be used from the account ID, from the account ID for that payment method. for that payment method. Number four, the number of days, the number of days for which the amount is to be kept in the bank. for which the amount is to be kept in the bank means what oh sorry see here we have the two house banks Right, HSBC main branch, HSBC A, 
and to another house bank. So we have two house banks, right? So in every house bank, we have the different accounts. Now, we have configured two payment methods, check payment method and bank transfer payment method. Now, both the methods can be used from both house banks. No? From the HSBC main branch, we can issue the checks and we can do the bank transfer. From the HSBC A, another house bank also, we can issue the checks and we can do the bank transfer. No? In that case, at the first instance, for each combination of house bank and payment method, we can set up the ranking order. For example, in the HSBC main branch, for the check payment method, I want to give first preference. This is only purely discretion, right? It's not a principle. So from the HSBC main branch, for the check payment method, I want to give first preference. Then in the HSBC main branch, for the bank transfer, I want to give second preference. Then in the HSBC A, another house bank, for the payment method C, I want to give third rank or third preference. Then in the HSBC A, for the bank transfer, I want to give fourth rank. I mean fourth preference. Like that, at the first instance, for each combination of house bank and payment method, we can set up the ranking order. Fine. Now, in the HSBC main branch, when the system is printing the checks, from which account ID the funds are to be used? Because in the HSBC main branch, we have the two accounts. Current account or checking account and the overdraft account. So when the system is printing the checks from the HSBC main branch account, from which account ID the checks are to be printed? Current account or overdraft account? That we can define. So my preference is <coughs> when the system <coughs> sorry <coughs> when the system is printing the checks from the HSBC main branch, it should print the checks from the account ID HSBC C current account or checking account. Following then when the system is printing the checks from the HSBC C account ID, what is the bank GL account to be created? That we have to define. 2 lakh 101. Bank account. HSBC bank account. Then in this HSBC 2 lakh 101 GL account. I am sorry. In this bank account, you have 10 million dollars funds. Out of this 10 million dollars, how much funds you want to use for the check payment method? For example, I want to use only 6 million dollars for the check payment method. Remaining funds I want to use for another payment method bank transfer. So in this HSBC account ID, how much funds should be used that we can define. Then for how many number of months, sorry, for how many number of days the funds has to be kept in that bank account that we can define. Generally till the checks are collected by the vendors. Till then we have to keep the funds. So all these parameters we define in the bank determination activity. Please write down this. I hope it's over for everybody. If anybody is still writing, let me know. I will wait. Now, path is same as above. 
set up bank determination for payment transactions. Click on position. Paying company code is equal to 3366. Click on enter. Select the paying company code. Select the company code 3366. Double click on ranking order. Click on new entries. Payment method is equal to C. Currency is equal to USD. Rank order 1. House bank HSBCM. Means in this house bank HSBCM, for the payment method C, I have given first preference. If you have the bank transfer payment method, for that if you want to give the second rank, then second preference, then payment method B, currency USD, rank order 2, HSBCM, house bank. So like that, at the first instance, you set up the ranking order for each combination of house bank and payment method. Click on save. Select the line. Double click on bank accounts. Click on new entries. House bank is equal to HSBCM. Payment method C. Currency USD. Means, so in the HSBC main branch, house bank, when the system is printing the checks, from which account ID the system has to print the checks? From the account ID HSBC C. So when the system is printing the checks from the HSBC C account ID, what is the GL account to be created? 2,101,01. HSBC bank account, current account. I hope everybody is following. Click on save. Double click on available amounts. Click on new entries. House bank is equal to HSBCM. Account ID. HSBCC. Account ID. HSBCC. Number of days. Triple nine. Means for 999 days, the funds are to be kept in this account ID HSBCC. Means the checks are collected. Till the checks are collected, the funds are to be kept in the bank. Currency USD. Available for outgoing payments. How much funds you want the system to use from this account ID? Let us say $2 million. Otherwise, if you enter all names, then whatever the total funds that are available in this account ID will be used by the system for the purpose of check payment method. Following. This is called. I have given the wrong ID. HSBCM. So here I have given all names. Otherwise you can enter $2 million also. This is called. Bank determination for payment transactions. Now. Assign payment method in the vendor account. Before this. Yesterday I told you that. All the settings can be configured in only one transaction code. There is no transaction codes for the individual steps. But there is one transaction code in which we can set up the total payment program. That is FBZP. Suppose for example, right, you are expecting some payments from the, vendor, from the customers. Right? That amounts can be entered here. Scheduled incoming payments. Actually, this is, uh, there is another module which is called Financial Supply Chain Management, FSCM, right? So, in the FSCM, there is a sub-module, Collection Management. So, from the Collection Management, the system will take that information. But if you don't use FSCM, right, it's not necessary at all. Now, there is one step, sorry, there is one transaction code wherein we can configure the total payment program, FBZP, FBZP. 
See, all the steps till now what we have done are here. Here, first we have set up the payment method in the country, no? So, click on payment methods in the country. See, click on position, go country US. It was already set up. So, after setting up the payment method at the country level, we have to set up the payment method at the company code level, right? So, click on back arrow. See, payment methods in the company code. After that, set up all company codes for payment transactions. Today, first step, right? This, this one. Already we have done it, no? See, paying company code, sending company code, etc. After completing this step, click on back arrow. Then, set up paying company codes. After that, house banks. After that, bank code determination. This is the step what you have done just now. <coughs> Clear? Now, see the step number 9. Assign payment method in the vendor account. Every vendor master record should be assigned with the payment method. If you don't assign the payment method in the vendor account, even though there are overdue invoices, system will not select those invoices for the payment program. Transaction code XK02. Change vendor master record. Company code is equal to 3366. Vendor is equal to 1,501. Yes, in was. Sir, APP configuration steps means uh, these are the six, six steps only, sir. Yeah. In in the screen, uh, FDZ Yes, screen. exactly, exactly. Okay. Vendor is equal to one lakh five hundred one. Company code double three double six. Select payment transactions under the company code data. Click on enter. Payment method C. Of course, tolerance group is there in your material. Check double invoice is there. Already these two fields have been selected. Then payment method C. Payment method C. Look at the screen. Here you can, if you notice the field name, payment methods, means we can assign multiple payment methods in the vendor account. Do one thing. Write one point here. You have some space here, no? Better to write here itself. We can assign. We can assign. Multiple payment methods. In the vendor account. We can assign multiple payment methods in the vendor account. For that purpose, enter all the payment methods. Enter all the payment methods. Separated by commas. Enter all the payment methods separated by commas. In that case, in that case, the system in that case the system will use the payment methods in the order they are entered. In the order they are entered. In the order 
they are entered. Means, sorry, in the order they are entered, in conjunction with the, in conjunction with the minimum amounts and the maximum amounts, minimum amounts and the maximum amounts. we have defined for the payment method. Means what? Suppose for example, you have configured two payment methods, bank transfer and check. So I want to assign both the payment methods in this vendor account. In that case, C comma B. Then the system give the first preference for the payment method C. For that, it will verify the minimum amount, sorry, it will verify the maximum amount we have defined in the second step. Just I will take you there. In the second step, set up payment methods for company code for payment transactions, right? We have set up the Minimum amount and maximum amounts. Set up payment methods for company code for payment transactions. See, first in the vendor account, we have given the payment method check. So, the first preference is given by the system to check payment method. In addition to that, the system will verify maximum amount you have entered for the payment method C. Here, for example, let us assume we have entered the maximum amount 1 lakh. But the invoice amount for this vendor is 1 lakh 20,000. Then, the system will skip this payment method. It will go for bank transfer. That's how the system will use the payment methods in the order they are entered in conjunction with the minimum amount and maximum amounts entered here. Clear? Now, from now onwards, end user steps. Let us post some invoices and we will see how we can use the payment program to print the checks. First, let us post one in, some one invoice, F-43. Let us post the invoices F-43. Document date is 3-12-2017. Type is KR. Company code double three double six. Posting date 3-12-2017. Period 12. Currency USD. Posting key 31. Account is 1,501. <coughs> Click on enter. The amount is 25,000. Business area double three double six. Payment terms triple zero one. Baseline date 3 2017. Text being goods purchased. Posting key 40. Account is 2 lakh 120. Click on enter. Amount is asterisk. Business area double three double six. 
text plus click on save so let us post one more invoice so that we can clearly understand the execution of automatic payment program even though it is not there in the material right i am posting one more invoice document date is 3 12 2017 type is kr company code double three double six posting date 3 12 2017 period 12 currency usd posting key 31 account is 1,501 click on enter amount is 75,000 business area double three double six payment terms triple zero one baseline date 3 12 2017 Text being goods purchased. Posting key 40. Account is 2,120. Click on enter. Amount is asterisk. Business area double three double six. Text plus. Click on save. So let us display the line items in the vendor account. FBL one and See, there are two open items, 25,000 one invoice and 75,000 one more invoice. So total you have to pay 1 lakh to this vendor. So let us see how to execute the payment program to print the check for these invoices. But before executing the payment program, we have to understand what exactly happens while executing the automatic payment program. See. Phases in the execution of automatic payment program. Phases in the execution of automatic payment program. There are four phases in the execution of automatic payment program. This is very, very important from the entry point of view also. Number one, parameters. Number two, proposal. Number three, program. Number four, print. So these are the four phases that are involved in the execution of automatic payment program. So at each phase, what happens? We have to understand that. In the parameters phase, parameters. In this phase, the user enters the selection criteria such as company codes, payment methods, next payment run date, vendor number range to be considered in the payment run. Means for which company codes you want to execute the payment program? Who are the vendors to be considered? What are the payment methods you want to use? All this information is entered in the parameters phase. Parameters is nothing but selection parameters. So without knowing the selection parameters, system cannot select the vendors, right? That's why all these selection parameters are entered in the parameter step. I mean, in the parameters phase. Then proposal. Based on the parameters entered, the system identifies the vendors who have become due as on the date of executing the program. See, based on the parameters entered, the system identifies the vendors who have become due as on the date of executing the program. And for every vendor, it identifies only those invoices which have become due. This is called proposal. We can edit the proposal and we can display the proposal. In the editing function, we can change the payment method, house banks, account ID, etc. We can also block an invoice for payment. What exactly is this? See, for example,
see in the parameters phase we have entered the vendor range 1,5012 1,600 all the 100 vendors we have entered so out of this 100 vendors only 3 vendors are due so the system will generate the list of these 3 vendors first for example Give me one minute. Huh? Yes. See, we have given the vendor range 1,501 to 1,600. 100 vendors we have given the range. But out of 100 vendors, today only 3 vendors are due. Like vendor number 1,501, there are some invoices due for this vendor. For vendor 1,510, there are some invoices due. And for vendor 1,576, there are some invoices due. So at the first instance, the system will display the list of vendors who have become due. And for every vendor, the system also displays what are the invoices due for that vendor. For example, for the vendor 1,501, right, you have Invoice number 100, whose amount is 75,000. Because I cannot pre-prepare this proposal because 
the vendor's numbers will be changes changing from batch to batch no? Okay, like that. See, at the first instance, the system will generate the list of vendors who have become due. So today, vendor 5 lakh, 1 lakh 501, 1 lakh 510, 1 lakh 576 have become due. But for 1 lakh 501 vendor, these are the three invoices that have become due. And for the 1 lakh 510 vendor, these are the three invoices that have become due. And for 1 lakh 576, there are some other invoices which have become due. So, for every vendor, the system will display the list of invoices which have become due. This is called proposal. So, you have to understand in such a way that if you understand like this, you can clearly remember that. The system is proposing to us, the system is proposing to us that it is going to print the checks for these invoices of these vendors. Is it okay? This is called proposal. The system is proposing to us like this. This is called proposal. Is it okay or not? If it is okay, you can proceed. If it is not okay, why it is not okay? Because here, for the vendor 1,510, actually there are three invoices to it. Out of these three invoices, I don't want to make the payment for 1,510 vendor on the invoice number 231. I hope everybody is following me. Out in this vendor, sorry, for the vendor 1,510, there are three invoices due. But I don't want to make the payment for the vendor 1,510 on the invoice 231 because there is a dispute on this invoice regarding quality. So until the quality dispute is settled, I don't want to make the payment. So I want to block the invoice from the payment program. You can edit the proposal. For that purpose, you can edit the proposal. That's what I told you in the screen. See, we can edit the proposal. In the editing function, right, we can change the payment method, we can change the house bank, we can change the account ID, and we can block an invoice for payment also. Clear? What exactly is the meaning of proposal? See, actually in the real time, what happens is, I'm an accountant. So I generated the proposal. I have taken the printout of the proposal. That proposal will be sent to my finance manager because the payments are to be approved by him. So I will take, the, I will generate the list of vendors and for every vendor, what are the invoices that are going to be paid? This is contained in the proposal, right? So I take the proposal printout. I will send that proposal to my manager finance. Then he will review the proposal. Then if he wants to block any invoices for any vendor, he will write his recommendations on the proposal paper and he will send that proposal paper again back to me. Then based on his recommendations, I will block the respective invoices. So where do we block? I will show you. While doing the step, I will show you. I will show you. This is called proposal. Then, program. Once the proposal is verified and authorized, the user executes the 
payment program. As a result, the following accounting functions are affected. As a result, the following accounting functions are affected. See, all the vendor due line items for which checks have been printed are cleared. All the vendor due line items for which the checks have been printed are cleared automatically. The vendor reconciliation accounts are updated automatically. Bank accounts are updated automatically. The check register is updated automatically. The vendor account balance are updated automatically. The payment documents are generated, means the accounting entries are posted automatically. So these six accounting functions are taken care by the system automatically. Then fourth phase. In this phase, the system prints the checks, payment advice and payment summary. So this is the last phase. This is what exactly happens in automatic payment program. Clear? Now we will see how to execute payment program. But before that, let's have a break of 10 minutes. So I'll be back exactly in 10 minutes.
yes i am back i'm sorry i was little bit late akila are you there akila are you there gadi are you there okay gadi okay chandra sekar ji ha hima saleja okay ka kalit roni are you there okay sinwas yes sir okay now execution of automatic payment program transaction code f110 we have two invoices so in one of the invoice change payment term 3001 to 3002 that we will see later first let us try to understand this right we can change the payment term my intention here is right i want to explain you how the payment program is executed but if you want to change the payment terms you can change it in that case if the invoice is not due it will not print the check that's why i don't want to change the payment terms now f110 <coughs> run date generally it is always current date run date is equal to 3/12/2017 identification abc1 give some name here generally what happens is the user can execute the payment program every day or once in two days or once in three days or once in a week based on their payment policy the user executes the payment program generally this payment program is executed every day in some organizations the payment program is executed multiple times also in that case for each time we have to give an identification so just like that i have given abc1 see here status no parameter centered as it so there is no parameter centered parameters means selection parameters so we have to enter the selection parameters click on parameters tab see the material clearly step is there and click on parameter tab company code is equal to 3366 payment method c next payment date 4122017 vendor 1501 vendor 1501 click on save now here we have to understand number of points okay now click on save fine here first of all how the system verifies or how the system selects what are the invoices to be paid first we have to understand how the system verifies or how the system decides which invoice are to be paid <coughs> now first i'll explain that point here in the real time we enter the vendor range 1501 to 1600 now at the first instance the system will verify if any open items are available in the vendor 1501 if the system does not find any open items in the vendor 1501 it will leave that vendor it will go to 1502 vendor again in the vendor 1502 if the system will not find any, if the system does not find any open items it will leave that 1502 vendor it goes to 1503 vendor again in the 1503 vendor it verifies if any invoices are there if any open items are there like that at the first instance the system will verify if any open items are available so let us check the open items in the vendor account 1501 fbl1 so in this vendor there are two open items right so from the open item it will identify the payment terms 
If you double click on this open item here also, you can see the payment terms. So what is the payment terms 0001 payment immediately? So the trade period in the payment terms is added to baseline date. Thereby it determines the due date. So for this invoice, what is the due date today itself? Okay. Then the due date for the invoice is compared with the run date here. If the due date of invoice falls on or before this run date, system will take that invoice into payment program. Suppose if the due date is 5-12, it will leave that invoice. It will come back to second invoice. Again, from the second invoice, it will identify the payment terms and the credit period in the payment terms is added to baseline date. Thereby, again, it determines the due date. So, in every, in, for every invoice, the system will find out the due date and the due date is compared with this run date. If the due date of the invoice is falling on or before the run date, it will take that invoice into, system, into consideration. Otherwise, it will leave that invoice. Like that, for every vendor, all the invoices are analyzed by the system like this. Clear for everybody? Then, why we have to enter next payment date here? This next payment date has got a lot of significance when you are executing the payment program periodically in a predefined fixed intervals. Means, for example, let us assume that on every Saturday, okay, today is Sunday, no? Let us assume that we are working seven days. Okay. So every Sunday we are executing the payment program. We are not executing payment program every day. Please remember, we are executing the payment program every Sunday. In that case, next payment date has got lot of significance. Put heading in the notes. Next payment date. Next payment date. Based on the next payment date, based on the next payment date, the system will print the check. The system will print the check for those invoices also. which may become overdue which may become overdue by the next payment date by the next payment date and on which The cash discount is also available and on which the cash discount is also available so that the cash discount is not lost. So that the cash discount is not lost. Let us take one example to understand this point. So, current date of execution of APP. APP means automatic payment program. Today is 3rd 12, 2017. Then, according to our payment policy, we execute the payment program on next Sunday. Next Sunday means 10. So, next payment date, 10 December 2017. This is the situation, right? 
Now, there is one invoice. The invoice amount is 1 lakh. Due date is 10 now. Let us say 8 to 12, 2017. If paid on 8 to 12, 2017, vendor will give us 3% cash discount. This is the scenario. See, there is one invoice whose due date is 8th December. So, if you make the payment on 8th December, the vendor will give us 3% cash discount. Means, at the time of purchasing the you know, goods, vendor said the credit period is 30 days. And if we make the payment on 30th day, he gives us 3% cash discount. So, 30th day is 8th December. I hope till now it's clear for everybody. So, in our company, we are executing the payment program on every Saturday, on every Sunday. So today is 3rd December 2017. Is this invoice due today? No. It is due on 8, 12th, 8th December. So this invoice is not due today. So let us assume system does not select this invoice for the payment program. But when you are executing the payment program next, 10th 12, 10th December. But on 10th December, this invoice is due, but overdue. Yes or no? Yes. It's overdue. So, the vendor gives the discount only if we make the payment on 8th December. But if you make the payment on 10th December, he will not give the cash discount. So, you have to lose the cash discount. It's a loss to the company. That's why, in that case, if you enter the next payment date, 10-12-2017, the system will print the check for this invoice also after reducing 3% cash discount with the current date. Here you may be getting some doubts. Uh, let me complete. The topic is not at complete. Clear? So the system will print the check for this invoice also after reducing 3% cash discount with the current date. Now, here, today is what? 3rd December. But the due date is 8th December. Okay. System has printed the check for this invoice after reducing 3% cash discount. So we, give, we have given the check to the vendor. And vendor is also having the account in the same house bank. So today itself, he has deposited the check in the bank and the funds are transferred today itself. In that case, you are having working capital limits. In that case, you have to pay interest for five days, no? Actually, the payment has to be done on 8th, but today you have done payment, 97,000. So on 97,000, you have to lose the interest for five days, no? So your discount received is reduced by the amount of the interest you have to pay for five days on 97,000. That's why you have to give the check to the vendor only on 8th December. In that case, how do we know the due date of this invoice? If you know the due date of invoices, what is the, where is the use of this automatic payment program? But in this particular case, we should know the due date. For that, we maintain one setting wherein the system will maintain the log of the due date of the invoices for which the payments have been done. So from that log, you can find the due date of this invoice and you can send this check to the vendor on 8th December only. Clear? Till then, you can keep the check in your desk. Clear? That is the significance of this next payment date. This is especially very important when you are executing the payment program periodically, not every day. If you execute the payment program every day, it doesn't have any significance. Please write down.
ఎస్ చంద్రశేఖర్ చెక్ ఈ జనరేట్ ఆన్ థర్డ్ విత్ థర్డ్ డిసెంబర్ డేట్ ఓన్లీ బట్ ఈస్ డెల్ గివెన్ టు వెండర్ ఆన్ ఎయిత్ డిసెంబర్ ఓన్లీ ప్లీజ్ రైట్ డౌన్ దిస్ ఐ విల్ బ్యాక్ ఇన్ వన్ మినిట్ i hope it's over for everybody now click on see the material click on additional log tab <coughs> so just like that here i have given next payment date tomorrow click on additional log select due date check select payment method selection all cases see required logging type due date check so by selecting this indicator the system will maintain the log of the due dates of the invoices for which payment has been done not for every invoice then what is the payment method that has been used for every invoice that log that log also is maintained vendor 1501 so whoever the vendors you specify here right the system will maintain the log of these two parameters click on save click on back arrow see parameters have been entered second phase click on proposal click on schedule proposal select to start immediately so when do you want the system to start the proposal immediately target computer press f4 and insert the name of your server target computer is equal to give your server name press f4 key to find and insert click on enter see proposal is running means it is selecting it is analyzing the invoices so you have to click on enter till you get the message payment proposal has been created see status shows proposal scheduled all created here here status shows proposal has been created so what is proposal now list of vendors and for every vendor list of invoices that are going to be paid so we can display the proposal if you want to display proposal you can click on this display proposal if you want to edit the proposal this is called edit proposal so according to our material click on edit proposal here all accounting clerks was already selected so you just click on enter means the system will display the proposals created by all the accounting clerks click on enter see here we have only one vendor vendor 105001 it is going to make a payment of 1 lakh here this type should be in green color so for this vendor it is going to make a payment of 1 lakh here we have given only one vendor that's why it has taken only this number just one second yes i am sorry for the interruptions so if the if another vendor is there and for him also there are invoices the system would have shown another line vendor 105002 and payment to him so like that at the first instance the system will display the list of vendors who have become queue 
okay fine for this vendor <coughs> 1 lakh 501 1 lakh is going to be paid so this 1 lakh contains multiple invoices or only one invoice we don't know right if you double click on the line item the system will display the list of invoices see for the vendor 1 lakh 501 two invoices are there see the material double click on line item of vendor number please add one sentence here double click on line item of vendor number to display list of invoices for that vendor <coughs> to display list of invoices for that vendor double click on the line item of vendor number to display the list of invoices for that vendor see for this vendor two invoices are you now out of these two invoices i want to block second invoice then double click on the double click again on the invoice number double click double click again on the invoice number block if you want look at the screen please i want to block second invoice double click on this line item payment block if you enter a or b system will not print the check for this invoice it will print the check only for the first invoice this is how we can block a payment from the invoice sorry we can block an invoice from the payment now i hope everybody is following the most important point here you have to remember is if you enter the blocking reason in the payment program the system will apply this block only in this payment run see today at 10 30 morning right i am executing payment program and i have blocked this invoice now in the afternoon if you execute the payment program again the system will take that invoice into payment run so the blocking is applicable only in the current run right but i don't want the system to take this invoice in any payment run i don't want the system to take this invoice in any payment run in that case at the time of posting the invoice in f-43 there is one field payment block so if you enter the blocking reason there the system will not select that invoice in any payment run till that blocking is removed and again in the vendor master record in the company code data there is one more field payment block so if you enter the block blocking reason in the vendor master record the invoice all the invoice of that vendor will not be considered in any payment run till that blocking is removed so these are the different scenarios wherein we can block the invoice we can block the invoice in payment run we can block the invoice at the time of posting we can block the invoices from the master record i will show you all these three the three parameters once the payment program is executed so here if you want to block you can enter the blocking reasons here i am not blocking suppose if you want to change the payment method house bank etc click on reallocate button you can enter the payment method house bank and account ids here we are having only one account id one payment method right so i am not changing anything click on save click on back arrow twice come to proposal screen now go to printout data medium tab this one printout data medium tab rff os underscore c this is our check program right enter abc1 your identification rff os underscore c is equal to abc1 click on maintain variance button 
So after clicking on maintain variance button, you add one sentence, select <coughs> select for all selection screens radio button, select for all selection screens radio button, this sentence you have to enter. Click on continue. Program run date 3-12-2017. Identification feature ABC1. Give your own name or the name you have given in the first screen. Identification feature is equal to ABC1. Paying company code 3366. Business area 3366. House Bank HSBCM Account ID HSBCC Check Lock Number One Here the check lock which you use for the automatic payment program non sequential checkbox should not be selected because while printing the checks the system cannot skip any checks so it will take the it will print the checks in the sequential order only. So the non-sequential checkbox should not be selected for the check lot used for the automatic payment program. Then under print control, <coughs> select print checks, printer LP01. So on this printer, system will print the checks. Select print immediately. Select print payment advice notes, printer LP01. Select print immediately. Then Print payment summary, printer LP01, select print immediately. And number of sample printouts 0. I don't want to take any sample printers of the checks. And select do not void any checks. Then click on attributes button. Description is equal to ABC1. Description or meaning, anything. Click on save. Click on back arrow. Click on save. Click on back arrow. Click on back arrow. Select the printout button. This one. Print out. Wait, the print out button does not come. No, we enter the payment method. We enter the payment method in the under master record. No check can be made in SAP GTS. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So there is some system error, right? I have to rectify this error. Okay. So this we will see in the next class. How to execute the payment program? We will see in the next class. Okay. So next class we have on Tuesday morning, Indian time, ESA time, Monday, right? So there is one system error in this. I have to rectify that error, okay? So after rectifying this error, we will see how to execute the payment program and also we will see the effects. Next class we have Tuesday morning, Indian time. Akila, you have any questions? Okay. Gadilingam, any questions? Okay, Chandra Sekhar. Sir, hello. Yeah, tell me. Sir, sir, in the payment run also we have provided all the banking details, like uh, which uh, bank and which method and all. <coughs> yes. Already we have provided in the uh, ranking orders and all, right? Yes. Why again we have to provide here? 
because good question good observation here we have only one company code in that case no issues but you have multiple company codes so in the parameters tab you have given the company codes uh double three double six double three double seven double three double eight so for each company code you may have different payment uh, house banks right that's why at the time of executing the payment program we have to enter house banks also sir if we have a two, two or more house banks so if you have the more two that's why when you have more than one house bank then you have to enter here even though you have the more than one house bank you have defined the ranking order but the thing here is you may have more company codes when you are entering the more company codes in the payment parameters then we have to enter the house bank and account ids okay sir yeah jerisha sir and uh, setting while setting up uh, this uh, sender company um, sender company code and uh, uh, paying company code mm. if you have a uh, more company codes yeah each company codes you have to uh, align right exactly for each combination of two it, company codes you have to do this step oh okay okay sir okay thank you sir yeah khalid you have any questions okay roni okay srinivas hello yeah tell me srinivas yes, sir uh, generally payment method where we define sir at uh, hosting level at uh, master data level sir payment method we assign in the master data okay right not at the app level in the app in the f-110 you specify what are the payment methods that are to be used by the system but all the payment methods are to be assigned in the master data clear okay, sir. okay then see you on tuesday morning indian time